Thank you, Francesca. Thank you. I'm really happy and honored to be here <laughs> this afternoon with all of you and to have the opportunity to share uh, these lectures with Rebecca um, and David. I am going to share my screen now. So, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, well, thank you for the for the introduction. Uh, what I want to talk about this afternoon is about. Uh, an idea that Francesca has introduced, this idea that uh, we are living in a changing world full of uh, challenges, uh, but also full of, let's see, or let's say emergencies and risks. Um, the scientists have told us that um, the Earth's system has transgressed uh, at least four planetary boundaries, uh, which are biodiversity loss, climate change, and the cycle of the phosphorus and the nitrogen. But what I want to stress this afternoon is that two of those boundaries, uh, climate change and biodiversity loss, are what the scientific used to call the, to call the core boundaries. And that means that transgressing these two boundaries uh, will or could uh, alter uh, the Earth system and move it into uh, a new a new state. Uh, this is important because, uh, as you all know, 70% uh, of the Earth system uh, is our water bodies, and uh, those areas are the areas that are suffering. Uh, these changes uh, in a more intense uh, way. So at the same time, they can become laboratories of change in order to uh, reduce and adapt to these changing conditions. And among, the, among them, uh, coastal areas are uh, the ones that uh, have more population and that, uh, for the reasons uh, they are the most uh, interesting areas to rethink uh, the way we design and let's say the way we inhabit this earth system. Um, all these years we have seen a lot of perturbances that are linked with hurricanes and tropical storms, uh, but I don't, I don't wanna talk about this super uh, storm. I just wanna emphasize uh, that uh, these changing conditions, the biodiversity lost and uh, the, um, the increase of the temperatures are changing uh, the whole landscapes all around the world and especially coastal landscapes. This diagram shows uh, in the center of the diagram, you can see the different coasts that we have in the world, coastal plains, barrier island, deltas, slopes of rocky coast, and, and coral islands. And as you can see, all of them are affected uh, by climate change. It all depends in their uh, inner end characteristics, as in the, their ge uh, geological layout, they were exposure, the tidal rain, the flora, the fauna, and the sediment balance. But the important thing for all of us is to understand that all the coasts all around the world, all the coastal landscapes are little by little uh, suffering uh, ecosystem disruption, gradual inundation, saltwater intrusion, erosion, and flooding. For sure, as you can see in the diagram, uh, with different intensities, but all those landscapes, all the coastal landscapes, are changing living landscapes. And this is really interesting for me because I think that this is uh, not only um, an emergency, but also an opportunity uh, to redesign, to rethink all these areas in order to adapt 
and to face uh, these uh, conditions, but also to improve their liability. And I want to um, talk about two projects that we have the opportunity to run uh, at the uh, at our uh, office. Uh, they all um, they both are um, done from the perspective of uh, resilience and resilience uh, focusing in uh, strategies based on, natu on natural on natural uh, based measures. Uh, so they are not uh, conceived as in infra as infrastructures or projects that try to mitigate. Uh, those uh, changing conditions. Uh, on the other hand, what they try is to transform uh, the water fronts uh, in order to reintroduce new habitats that can allow uh, us as citizens uh, to recover that biodiversity lost and at the same time to face uh, uh, climate change. And in order to work from this perspective, from the perspective of resilience. There are many tools. I don't have time this afternoon to talk about them, but I just want to uh, uh, to emphasize that designing with diversity, with ecological variability, with modularity, uh, for sure, acknowledging the slow variables, uh, trying to fix and to design tight fit that with the projects and the communities and working uh, with the social capital uh, and trying to also merge or create overlap in governance uh, are some of those tools that we as designers need to introduce uh, in, in our works in this, let's say, Anthropocene uh, era. So, the first of uh, the first of the projects that I just want to talk about is um, uh, it was in fact a research and a study that the municipality of Barcelona asked uh, uh, to us. You, I don't know if you uh, know the city of of, of Barcelona, uh, but uh, Barcelona. Well, you can see. Barcelona in the image, no? You can see uh, the uh, Coiserola Mountain, uh, and you can see uh, the La Ciudad de la Park, you can see the ancient city here, and the enlargement of Cerda, and the port, and the new developments that were uh, designed by the city um, due to the Olympic Games in 1982. So uh, this new waterfront uh, is was created, in fact, in 1982, uh, and this is the way we used to see the city of Barcelona. But I prefer to see the city of Barcelona uh, these ways because this image allowed me to understand uh, how the city uh, was. Work so you can see here the city and in fact the city of Barcelona is a city uh, that is settled or that was settled in between two rivers the small river Besos that you can see here and the bigger rear, uh, river Llobregat but those rivers in fact are two deltas and uh, those deltas used to uh, nourish uh, with the sediments that they uh, that they were able to bring. To, uh, to the sea, they used to nourish the coast. That's why uh, at the beginning uh, uh, in the city, we have this kind of super large barrier sedimental uh, area. Uh, but little by little, um, the city was uh, has been constructed and the rivers have been canalized, so they don't carry sediments uh, anymore. And that means that the city has become more vulnerable to climate change uh, uh, effect. And the most important uh, thing is that, as you can see in the image, the city of Barcelona uh, is 
unable to be nourished by sediments. Only uh, in the mouth of the river Besos, there, uh, there is a still a small sediment balance available, but mostly uh, all the coast, uh, all the waterfront uh, has, uh, has no sediments to nourish uh, their beaches. That means uh, that uh, the, the beaches of the, of the city are really uh, vulnerable. So in this context, the city of Barcelona asks us to think about, uh, to think in a long term, to think about the future uh, of the city and the future of the beaches and the waterfront of the city, to think uh, of, of mm, it uh, by 2100, which was something that never has been uh, done. So it's a kind of laboratory, a kind of experiment, a, a research, as Rebecca was talking about, but it was something that they want to, uh, to, to think uh, in order to uh, understand if there could be another possibilities, another urban landscapes in the future, uh, for, uh, and other scenarios for the waterfront of the city of, of Barcelona. And in order to do that, for sure, uh, the thing that we first did uh, uh, was to analyze the different changes uh, of the different uh, domains along the time. No? So you can see how the social activity and the economic activity and the different uh, environments have changed along the time in these diagrams. And so we need to envision uh, what, uh, what will happen in the future uh, with higher uh, levels of water and higher temperatures uh, in the in the coastal area. No? So our main idea was uh, to explain that uh, with all the changes in the waterfront, uh, the, the city uh, has uh, simplified its coastlines, so the seafront has become, had, had become more vulnerable. Um, uh, the whole idea is try to spine the diversity of spatials and situation between uh, the land uh, and, and the sea. You know? So how to do uh, that? As you can see uh, in the image, what we propose is to turn the coastal uh, area into an uh, area less vulnerable with, uh, with more um, rocky, uh, um, waterfronts and uh, with dunes and vegetated berms that protect it. I'm going to show this uh, uh, in a different way in order to make it more uh, comprehensible. Uh, what we have done uh, is trying to also stress, uh, I think as Re Rebecca uh, uh, was trying to explain us uh, this afternoon the different design tools um, uh, that we can use in order to uh, to do that. And in fact, we construct or we gave the municipality a kind of of toolbox of different design tools, uh, geotextile tools, storm water, wind, many uh, resilience tools that uh, they could use uh, in order to. Uh, to do that. The uh, coast of Barcelona is mainly, as I have told you, a delta area or a coastal plain of barriers. So uh, as you can see uh, in, the, in this diagram, uh, the most important uh, hazards are uh, erosion and uh, ecosystem disruption. And with all these different tools, uh, we wanted to explain uh, to, the, to the municipality that you can combine them in, in different ways, creating different uh, uh, living uh, landscape to protect from those uh, hazards. Uh, as we don't have much time, I am just going to show you two small uh, uh, areas 
Um, okay, so the first side uh, is La Barceloneta. Um, La Bar the Barceloneta is uh, the fishing district. It is one uh, of it's the oldest district uh, of the of the of the city. Uh, as you can see. Uh, in the images, the current situation uh, shows how uh, the the um, the urban frame is uh, really more or less uh, um, in continuity uh, uh, with the sea. There are only uh, two meters and a half of difference, and that make. Uh, this area is really vulnerable, uh, not to uh, sea level rise, uh, because the sea, <laughs> the, the sea is not going to increase uh, so much in the long term, but um, uh, it makes it, it make, uh, this area really vulnerable uh, to floods due to uh, storms. Uh, because as you can see, the, uh, the area has no protection, and, and it all all the district can be uh, flooded in the in the future. And in the fact, in the present, they are suffering from many floods. Uh, and at the same time, uh, one of the the other problem is the erosion. All, almost all the beaches of the city. Of Barcelona are going to disappear, um, and maybe uh, even uh, earlier than 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 we think. In fact, after this after this study, the city of Barcelona has created um, a panel of experts uh, that um, and I'm part of those uh, experts that are working with the. Uh, um, uh, with uh, the uh, with the, the people in the uh, municipality to uh, try really to understand what is going to happen in the future uh, because I don't know if you know that but the beaches of Barcelona are one super big tourist attraction uh, we receive uh, each year more than three and a half million of of visitors and, and there are a lot of of hotels and activ economic activities that are linked uh, to uh, to these uh, beaches, so this is really a problem. So our uh, our first or our suggestion, which is only uh, um, to or was only to make them think that another uh, waterfront can be constructed. And they can, um, for sure, uh, face this uh, climate change effect, and at the same time, uh, they they can improve the livability of the citizens. Well, our uh, our idea was to transform uh, the profile uh, of the beach to create a burn to make the uh, to continue the 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 existing dam and to create like a kind of maritime. Uh, district using uh, some of those uh, design tools that we were talking about uh, 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 before. No? Uh, for sure, this is a kind of ideal scenario that I'm sure that is not going to happen. That it was like a kind of provocation uh, to, to, to rethink, to begin to think, uh, as fortunately has happened two years uh, afterwards, uh, about the future of, 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 of the beaches. No? If we continue uh, um, along the coast, uh, we can see the maritime promenade. Uh, this is uh, here, as you can see, uh, the level of the city is five meet, more or less five meters higher than the, uh, the level of the, of the sea. So the urban tissue here is not at risk, but uh, so here we are not going to suffer from the floods, but at the same uh, time, all these beaches are going to uh, to disappear due to the uh, erosion. Uh, so our proposal 
was to transform uh, this area in a more uh, rocky uh, coast, less vulnerable uh, to uh, erosion, uh, to create a vegetated uh, berm and, and to give the uh, or to include in this waterfront uh, some amenities as sea pools uh, or elevated beaches uh, where they to engage uh, or to uh, be able to be used along the whole year by the citizens because at the same time this is a super touristic area of the city that is quite identified and um, one of our main main idea was trying to to give this area back uh, to the citizens of Barcelona, not only the tourists, and to uh, be able to be used all along the year. So again, you, here you can see the different tools that that we use. And uh, I like to show these images because uh, I uh, here you can see how uh, how the coast is something that can be recreate and recreate and redesign and it's something that really needs to be done uh, if we want to uh, face uh, climate change effect and at the same try, time sorry, uh, try to solve uh, biodiversity loss and we can do it from the point of view of resilient uh, introducing or reintroducing the habitats that we have uh, lots and trying to combine them with new social uh, activities. So uh, the last uh, area that I want to show you uh, is this uh, area, is the area of the Vesos. If you remember, was one of the of the rivers that uh, um, one of the rivers of uh, of that framed the city of of Barcelona. Here in the slide, what you can see is the thermal uh, power bank plant, sorry, which in fact it was the uh, thermal power plant that used to give uh, electricity to the city of Barcelona in the past. Now this uh, uh, thermal power plant you know, is not working anymore and the city uh, of Barcelona want to, uh, to change, to develop a new waterfront uh, here. Uh, the river, um, this is the area today. Here you can see the current conditions. The river Besos is a river that has been uh, canalized, uh, but there is a still a small area of the course with, where we can find natural sediment balance of sediments that are carried by um, the waves along the um, the coast from the Maresme uh, to the mouth of the of the river uh, Besos. As you can imagine here, there are let's say business as usual, uh, a lot of business as usual uh, proposals to uh, um, to construct housing and hotels and all these uh, stuff. And also a lot of uh, um, designs that uh, think about this area, as you can see here, with um, with this kind of groins of dikes in order to protect the this bit uh, from erosion. Um, so again, the consortium of the Besos, because this is not only the this area is not only the municipality of Barcelona, it's also in, the, in three different municipalities, uh, um, and, and is managed by uh, an, an agency uh, which is called the consortium of uh, Besos. Again, our idea was trying to, to to put together to create a landscape combining. Uh, the constructions of the of the dikes, the development uh, of the area, and also uh, the 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 cleaning of some of the of some poison materials that the air, that this area has due to its uh, industrial uh, uh, story. 
So here you can see uh, the, the current conditions. You can see uh, how the sediment uh, moves here. As you can see the area that is going to suffer from, from erosion. Erosion, sorry. Also, the area that can be uh, flat, and that means that there are several habitats that can uh, disappear, and of course, those, those areas that um, live uh, in the dunes and in the wetland areas are really vulnerable. Um, uh, we don't have uh, a lot uh, uh, in the world. Um, at the same time, uh, the climate conditions are, the climate temperatures are, the temperature is going to increase. So uh, this area um, that is really uh, dense, uh, as you can see, uh, is going to suffer uh, from this kind of heat uh, waves in the in the future. And when I wanna. Yeah, what I want to explain, or what I, what I want to stress here, is that um, is this idea that we are able to um, redesign coastal uh, areas with this idea of uh, not trying to protect, but on the other hand, embrace climate change as an opportunity to create more adaptive. Um, biodiverse, um, livable um, landscapes. And that means uh, to design um, from the perspective of a, a, what it, it used to be called a fail-safe mode, um, which means that for sure uh, when you design, uh, you know that some of these areas are going to, uh, uh, to flat uh but you for example but if that happened you what you try to do with this layer approach is to create the different habitats that in fact are uh different places where you can experience different uh amenities uh, uh, that are going to diminish uh, uh the strength of that that pers perturbation. For example, here, uh, this layer ap approach means uh, that the, the submerged uh, reef, the geotextile tubes, the, uh, the double dune system, the vegetated uh, berm, and the different uh, wetland uh, areas, if a huge uh, uh, storm um, happen as uh, and is happening those days uh, in Barcelona, uh, they are going to absorb the energy of the waves and they are going to flood, but uh, nothing is going to happen because these habitats uh, have the capacity to absorb uh, those, uh, those effects. So we need to move from this profile to this other profile and we need to think uh, from this idea of not protecting but embracing uh, climate change not only from a phenomenological point of view but also from an ecological point of view because embracing climate change uh, uh, means that we can uh, use uh, the the changes uh, to uh, create different habitats. So this is the current conditions. Sorry, this is the current condition, as you can see that in the images with the thermal power point uh, here and all the dikes and, and, and the groins. Um, there is also, there are also things that we can uh, uh, see because there is also a submerged uh, bit that is here more or less uh, along this, this boundary. And this is our proposal for two, uh, 2050. The proposal, as, you, as I was talking about before, uh, consists on this layer approach. So it's creating a, a layer system of different uh, habitats that combines are able to fade erosions and flooding. And at the same time, create 
different uh, different um, micro uh, habitats that can increase uh, biodiversity and at the same time they are amazing areas for people to enjoy uh, nature or so to uh, or work or whatever no? and for sure uh, this kind of resilient approach uh, from the point of view of, of these signs also means that the landscapes are going to evolve, that the landscapes are going to change and that even some of the landscapes that we create uh, today are going to be to disappear. So they are going to become transitional landscapes, uh, but that transition is necessary for the city and for the society to adapt to uh, to these current conditions, to these changing conditions. So um, this is how the area looks today. And here you can see uh, the, the design by 2030, you can see the geotextile tube, the double dune system, the vegetated berm, and the different uh, wetland uh, areas that could be nourished with the uh, uh, um, with the water that comes from the river, the source, but also with child water intrusion. So they are going to create uh, a different kind of wetlands with different intensity of salinity, and which is means that they are going to be able uh, to host different fauna and flora. So just yes, really quickly, you can see all these uh, sections. Um, where well, you can see the main idea, this idea of the layer approach, and here on the details how they can be uh, constructed, because this is important. Uh, landscape de design uh, needs to introduce, as Rebecca was talking, a lot of innovative tools uh, that they are new materials and new processes that need to be tested through our design. So many of the tools that we use in our project, they are still innovative tools. Here you can see the, uh, the geotextile dubs that can consolidate uh, the beaded and the double uh, system of dunes, the vegetated berm uh, and the wetland areas, and how uh, these landscapes are going to uh, change. So there are landscapes that are designed to be transitional uh, landscapes and in between be able to accommodate to the, those changing conditions. Here we have another, another section. Well, it's the same, the same idea. Uh, and just to finish some images of, of this kind of approach uh, to uh, the redesign of, of these coastal uh, areas. Um, I don't know because we don't have much time, but if you are able to to uh, to see what is that many of the tools that I was talking at the beginning of this lecture, modularity, uh, ecological variability, overlapping of governances are behind uh, those, those designs. So this is how the area uh, works uh, today with the drainage system. With uh, so, one thing is, uh, is the the uh, the infrastructures are not thought as living infrastructures; are just infrastructures uh, to protect or to um, um, to protect us. Uh, uh, from the reefs, but if we are able to design and think and rethink uh, infrastructure as landscape, of, or better said, landscape as an infrastructure, we can change how all the metabolic uh, behavior of, of these water forms and transform them in living infrastructure uh, systems that are able to, uh, to, to adapt to those changes. And for sure, with this idea of modularity, they are more accessible, they are able to embrace uh, the changes of the habitats and the ecosystems that 
need to be accommodated to the different climatic conditions. So uh, uh, facing climate change means at the same time from those, this approach um, to face also biodiversity, uh, biodiversity um, loss. And at the same time, the human activities need to evolve and accommodate to these changes of the uh, of, of of the habitats. So this is the area today and how we envision it for 2050. Um, maybe that uh, if we reach 2100, some of the areas, some of the beaches are going to disappear, but we will be have we will um, be able to have this uh, uh, ancient uh, Mediterranean uh, vegetated uh, berms and the dune will have become less fragile. This is another image today. And you can see that the wetlands can be uh, created. But maybe that again by 2100, some of them uh, would disappear. And this is another image today. And how it could evolve. Uh, so this is the last image. Um, I just want to. I hope like I, I could I have been able to explain to you that um, this emergency of this current situation of emergency if we talk about biodiversity loss and if we could talk about uh, climate change claims for uh, another way of design and this design needs to embrace uh, those uh, those uh, emergencies and the way to do it is uh, to think about those emergencies as opportunity to introduce transitional landscapes in our daily lives. Um, that's all. Thank you.